All right, today let's dive into a little of the Miami Dolphins. And as always with these videos, these videos are never to criticize or attack anybody. It's just, to me, teaching. And I always say, I hope that these videos get back to the right people. Not to say that I'm the only one that knows anything about football, but simply to challenge what teams are doing. Why do we do what we do? Why do we do the little things? Where are the nuances and how important are they? So, um, you know, as teams exit the playoffs, I think it's important to always go back and self-scout and look at yourself and, and, and challenge what and why you're doing things. So, um, and along the way, I like to just teach, teach what's going on. Um, so let's take a look here uh, with Miami and just kind of dive into it a little bit. All right, so here we go like the little play design here, everybody runs it, what we call double deep hook. Okay, so off of the play action, which Miami does really, really well, they're gonna run, push down here, run a deep hook, push down here, run a deep hook, and then they'll have guys coming to the flat on both sides. So good combination, everybody runs it. We're trying to get the split of these safeties somewhere, get back and try to get one of those big shots, and then we, check it down okay so again i think yeah as you break these things down you want to look at all things factored in so this is one of the things i was talking about uh just with two of that sometimes i feel he plays too fast you know gets into games now uh, this is the situation here where uh tight end should be blocking this he goes over and blocks this but maybe that's the case here maybe Tua feels that pressure right there and, and you see how quickly he's getting to this flat when there's really no need just step up in the pocket and anticipate which is what he does well and either side that he picks uh, probably going to pick the side down here on the bottom which makes sense but either side uh, just anticipate as you do so well and let this thing go let it go you got your window you got the split of the linebackers now he gets to his check down we get a positive play all good but you know just kind of speaking to all right with Tua Got to figure out why he gets sped up sometimes and how do we slow him down with what we're trying to do offensively. Okay, this was a, a play that, that I talked about already. I don't know if you saw my video before, but it's what we call four strong, right? One, two, three, we're going to motion the back. He becomes the fourth guy strong. So when we do this, the idea is to get Tyreek Hill one-on-one -on, -one on the backside, get everybody to push over, and you see it. Everybody defensively is pushed over yet they're going to end up running a safety over the top um, and so that's the key component is is the backside guy one-on-one -on -one or does he have help over the top but normally it's taught look at the backside guy look at the one-on-one -on -one guy see if he's open if not work back to the front side so that's what Tua does here and knowing this corner knowing he's got help over the top what's he going to do he's going to play hard inside leverage they're going to play two man here hard inside leverage take away anything breaking inside, so that's pretty much dead, okay? So Tua goes from there and he works back to the front side, okay? This was the problem I had with the front side is just what exactly are we doing with this concept that this player right here, uh, he runs in and then stops and kind of looks like he's re you know bouncing back or pivoting back to the outside and then Waddle's coming and running the in, okay? So I always ask those kind of questions is, timing of this route if I look over at Tyreek and then I come back I need to make sure that the timing of these routes because there's not a great discrepancy in depth right Waddle is running six or seven yards deeper than the underneath guy there's not a discrepancy in depth so they can't be in the same spot whenever I get back to them so this is what two is seeing he's coming back trying to read it to this side and he ends up trying to throw it to the right guy the problem is he's got a defender and his own guy underneath the secondary guy that he's trying to throw it to and he can't drive this throw and put it on there so as he comes back here timing wise they're stacked on top of each other which ultimately leads to a high throw along with maybe the pressure up front but if he can come back here and somehow get a split what, what i don't know if this guy's running inside to me then i want this guy to keep going clear it out you know, whether we have man or zone, doesn't matter. If I have zone and this defender back here is taking away Tyreek, I'll recover to the shallow there. But uh, again, it, it all comes down to the why. Why do we have this guy stop when this guy's coming here? 
Okay, and if we do have that guy stop, where is Tua throwing the football? Is he trying to throw it so quick that he throws it outside of him, or does he have to wait so long that he throws it back behind him? This stuff is important to know. Tua, where are you going? You don't have Tyreek. Well, you can't go right back to Waddle because you have to wait for him to pass the guy underneath. So again, where do we go with these routes and the timing of everything? Because usually you go here, and then you just work your way across. So it would be two, three, and then four over here, but all about spacing and exactly what are we trying to do here. Uh, you know, rewind it a little bit more because again, to me, I always want, if I'm gonna tell you something, I'm always gonna say, okay, what would I do? Okay, so we're gonna have this. I like this combination. We have this lead, I call it a sled, so it's a swing with a lead over there. And then we've got Waddle running this in route here, okay? So if we're gonna do those two things, so if, and again, I always say, what, what's my primary on this? Well, my primary is backside, but if it's not backside, who am I trying to get the ball to? And I'm gonna guess it's this in to Waddle. So what am I going to do if I've got this combination here? I'm gonna do one of two things. I'm either going to run something across here so I can try to clear out the underneath, and then I can use Tyreek back to the shallow coming into my face. And then these two guys will be at different places and different levels. And we'll try to pull it out and, and hopefully, uh, you know, open it up to the backside. Okay, that's one thing. The other thing that I might do here is if that's what I'm trying to do with Waddle, I might just take this guy and just run him on a wide hook right here. So I'm going to run him on a wide hook, hoping to pull some defender from inside to him so then i open up the window for waddle inside of him so one way shape or form i'm moving that secondary uh guy the underneath guy i'm moving him to a different zone that i'm trying to hit so i'm either moving him to an outside zone or i'm crossing the field to move him to another zone so i can open up or at least have a solo zone that i can throw it to with waddle instead of stacking them on top of each other and making this really hard on my quarterback. Okay, so this is the typical and one of their favorite plays. Uh, usually what I call an RPO naked. So we read the defensive end, try to get him to pull down with the run, and then we have the naked. So the naked has a flat. They run a seam here, kind of a settle seam. So this guy comes off, if the linebackers pull up, there's a chance to hit it right there in that first window and then they run a shoot or a go on the outside and then they recover to, uh, to the flat. It's a good play. Tua runs it really well. They do it really well. These guys are very good at finding these windows right in here. So right there, there's a window. You thought maybe Tua's got room right there, maybe hit it in the seam. Does a great job here. I thought for sure he's going to that seam and then he's gonna dump it off to the flat here, but does a great job working out and seeing that Tyreek gets leverage here and gets distance and he takes the shot on this one. I mean, again, this is something that they do really, really well. I love the concept because it adds to the run game, Tua, his anticipation, his feel, and here to go all the way down and get the touchdown from Tyreek on that concept was pretty, pretty good right there. All right, so I put this one in there for a couple reasons, okay? So they're just gonna run a uh, this is like a third or maybe even a fourth down situation here. Uh, they're just going to run basically a bubble screen to the back. Okay, the first thing I noticed watching this on film for all the quarterbacks out there is that Tua never gets the laces on the football here. And so often we talk about get the ball out quick, get the ball out quick. Don't worry about the laces, just get the ball out quick. I'm a firm believer that if you throw with the laces, if that's how you throw when you're trying to make a good throw, then get the laces no matter what you do. Don't sacrifice accuracy uh, for quickness. Accuracy is the most important thing. So work on getting the ball and getting the laces as fast as you possibly can. But Tua throws this without laces. So he ends up missing this throw because he threw it without laces, trying to win with quickness as opposed to accuracy. Don't do it. So that's the first part, okay? The second part is if I know this is the only thing that I'm throwing, all I've got is this back on this swing route, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna run this and I'm gonna show you what Miami does. So they run the back out there and then Mostert stops right there inside the numbers, okay? Um, and, and so I don't like that aspect of it because when we're running a, a screen and a speed screen like this, I never want to stop my receiver. 
If, if I can keep him on the go, I want to hit him on the go. So he's got the momentum. He's moving. He's coming downhill and we gain the advantage. So I never want to stop him. Okay. So that's the first part is we got to stop him and then get him going again. Now, some people will say, okay, maybe the reason that we stopped him, because what really does happen with defenses is wherever you throw the ball, they attack. So if you throw the ball inside, they're more apt to attack inside. So maybe we're trying to throw it inside, get those guys to go inside so we can get leverage blocking and then bounce outside. I understand the theory. I understand the theory behind that. But to me, there's a better way of doing that. So again, it's about teaching. Okay, so what would I do here? If I'm a quarterback or what I'm teaching my quarterbacks is that if you know you're throwing the screen, okay, what I want you to do is simply get this back started and then snap the ball as soon as he gets outside this defensive end. I never want to snap it so soon that this defensive end can actually affect the throw. So I want to motion him just to the point where he gets outside that defensive end so I know that I can make the throw and then I'm going to snap it. I'm going to snap it and so... He's barely moving, but then he can keep going. I can get it to him on the run, and we're doing both things here. We're throwing it to him quick, so we're completing the ball inside the blockers, just like if we stopped him inside the blockers. We're completing it very quick and inside so they can still attack that if they want, yet I keep him moving from that point uh, you know, so he doesn't have to slow down and catch it. Also, when you throw it inside, what it does is it helps give – the, the blockers leverage. The wider you let this guy go, the more chance of defenders bouncing outside and making the leverage for the blocks harder. So the sooner you can throw it, the better, okay? The last element here, watch this guy. This guy's playing man on the back. So he's moving with the back. The sooner I snap it, boom. The sooner I snap it, the more I set it up for angles to block, angles to block, because there's really only three defenders out there. If we catch this and we do this clean, this should be a walk for the first down right there. And so again, little bitty details that I just, I just ask why, why? And again, I'm not telling you to do something that I don't have a why behind it. I've got a reason and an understanding in my mind why I would do what I do. Doesn't mean it's the only way. I say this all the time, but tell me why it's not. Tell me what's better. Tell me why doing it a different way turns out better and gives me more advantage. Great, then I can challenge the way that I think about it, but that's what I'm trying to do with these videos is give you guys an understanding of always what I'm thinking. Okay, so here, this was a fourth down play, I know, and they're trying to run something over here. So I'm not sure if Tyreek is actually supposed to run the rub and the shoot down the sideline or as he does here they start the rub and then he comes back underneath so maybe they were going to fake that rub down the sideline and then come back underneath I've seen them do that that's a really good play um, but let's start over there let's notice Tua that I've got two guys on top of Tyreek two guys they are saying Tyreek will not catch this ball then I also have a safety over the top so I've got Four guys over here to cover two. You know, a guy to cover everything deep, two guys to jam and affect Tyreek. So my first thought is, why are we even thinking over here? Why do we think that Tyreek's going to be able to beat those two defenders and then also beat the safety if he's going deep on this play? Why, are we, why aren't we off of that right now, okay? On the other, and you see what happens, right? Again, he actually ends up beating both of them. They both go wide, and he's got a shot back underneath if that's what he's supposed to do. And, but to me, it's just, what, why are we even trying? If I don't have anything good on the other side, maybe that, hey, we got to jam it into Tyreek. But on the other side, we have a stick or a hook and a flat, and then we're motioning to a go right here, okay? So with all of that, again, to me, details details okay so this to me is just stick so normally we have a stick you've got to go on the outside and then you run a stick with the flat so however you want to do it and whoever turns what direction all that stuff it's still just stick so anytime we run stick i want to create a natural rub with my route so what do i mean by that is if I'm the guy running this stick, I want to know where my flat defender, or my flat uh, runner is. So the flat runner is the guy inside of him. When I know where that flat runner is, I am going to, if I think there's some sort of man coverage with this guy right up in his grill, 
if I think there's some sort of man coverage or this guy chasing this guy, then what I want to do, and again, it's not really out of the ordinary because I'm really just going to ask you to run your route. But the way we run the route is we tell our stick runner that we want you to seam inside. I want you to seam inside first because the biggest thing is we're trying to get separation between those two guys if we're playing against zone. But if we're getting man, I want you to seam inside. And as you seem inside, it gives me a great opportunity to kind of naturally run through the defender that's covering the flat here. So if I seem inside and just get a tiny bit of his body right here, we got a fourth and two situation. We're walking for the first down. But notice here that instead, my guy avoids, look at that. I mean, he is set up to simply run his route and create all kinds of interference. Now, I'd love to see this guy wider so we can clear this out, but you see what's gonna happen on this flat. This flat is going to be wide open if we create the rub. Well, just a little thing, well, why not? If you're simply just running up here to hook anyways, you're not even breaking out of it away from a defender, but either way, build in the way that you run routes to create opportunities for you. Seam inside, it creates spacing against zone, seam inside. So if we get man, that seam inside is gonna force this guy to go under, to go over. Maybe I run into him, whatever, but it creates space for my flat to be able to get open. Here, we just run right to be covered, nothing. He goes backside to the two on one, all kinds of crazy stuff happening, and we don't convert, and we're off the field, giving the ball back to Patrick Mahomes again. Details, details or everything. Okay, so here's another four strong situation here. Motion the back, he's going to run a swing. We got something else back here one-on-one, -on -one, or that one-on-one -on -one with Tyreek. Tyreek gets jammed, he's got a safety over the top. So once again, to me, normally that's pretty much just dead anyways, as long as I've got two defenders back there to take him. On the front side, we're gonna run, and it's a little slow happening, but we're gonna run a corner, we're gonna go right down the seam and then we're gonna run a hook. So I actually really like this you know, play concept overall because I think it gives you options if you get some kind of too high safety. Okay, I don't know if this guy here adjusts and makes this flat, what we call a middle read, that he runs an in route if it's a middle close defense. Not sure how that all works out, but if I get a too high situation here, I really like this play, okay, because we get a situation right here where we're gonna run a corner and a swing, okay? So the first thing is, is right now, we've only got one defender over here on the outside. Bunch of defenders that stay tucked inside. So I'm gonna get a high low on this outside defender from the get-go. Now, bad snap, so that may throw this whole thing off, but I'm coming out here and knowing because of how they rotated this, I just have to read this guy. This guy gets depth, kick it to your swing right now. If these guys were to push through it, okay, so push through, push through, and this guy push through, then we get a chance to possibly go two on one on the inside over there, but it, it's really hard for them as they're trying to get through all of this to figure out the bodies, and so you see it right there, right? We have opportunities right here. This corner goes back, I've got this opportunity. If this guy is motioning before the snap uh, to get way wide, then I come right back to the inside from there. So opportunities over there, just right here, it's just, as Tua, you just gotta understand what you're seeing. And again, the snap was off, the pressure gets there fairly quickly. But once I see this and quarterbacks, you're always watching. The biggest thing is you wanna watch with motion, okay? So as this motion is going, I'm watching these underneath defenders to see if anybody pushes out past my bunch over there. Because if nobody does that, if nobody adjusts and pushes out with that guy, I know my eyes right off the bat are going to the furthest outside defender. Because I know I'm gonna replace him with the corner route, but as soon as I see that outside defender, knowing none of these guys got outside my bunch, if he gets depth at all, boom, ball's out of my hands right now, and I'm winning just like this. Nobody gets wide, nobody adjusted with the back. This guy opens up right here, kick it. Kick it right now, but that's something that we need to see pre-snap more than anything. Hey, we got two guys backside on Tyreek. I'm probably not gonna go there. 
Or even if I go to Tyreek first, I know when I come back, my eyes need to get right to the outside defender because nobody else shifted over in this play. Turns out leading to a sack. Okay, so these are, are, are some of the things too that, that scare me a little bit in this offense. Now I understand, we're trying to sell out for the run. We're trying to do things that we've done before. And so we feel like because of what we're doing underneath, um, you know, we can run some things that may not be all structurally sound, but our run game is gonna make up for it. And so what do I mean by that? Okay, we're gonna run a fake run off to this side over here. So basically, every one of my guys outside of these two receivers are going to the bottom of the screen, okay? And then on the top of the screen, I'm gonna run a go and a corner, okay? So normally when you run this concept, we want somebody in the flat, okay? So we're gonna try to clear out the outside defender with this guy, and then we can high-low the underneath defender with the corner and the flat. So we always want kind of three levels on this play. And so, as you see this right here, when we come back, this is what Tua is looking at right here. Like, he's got the go route with a safety up over the top. He's throwing a corner route with a corner route, a corner sitting underneath him. So, technically, if we were really running this, I'm probably throwing the flat in this situation. He doesn't have that here. He only has the go or the corner. I mean, unbelievable throw right here up and over the underneath guy and beating the corner who's falling off with the throw. But man, if I'm Tua right here, I'm saying, oh my gosh, what am I doing? Where am I throwing it? What are my options here? Now, great throw, great play. They get a big chunk throw on this, but that kind of stuff to me scares me as a quarterback. I wanna know, okay, why are we doing that? And what if they leave two defenders over there like that and we have nobody else what do I do with the football? I'd like to have somebody threatening the underneath coverage. So at least if I don't get one of those two, because two guys stay high, I got a chance to stay on that side and get to my check down. Okay, I broke this one down already too. I don't know if you got a chance to see it or not. But okay, so this is an empty set. So we're going to an empty set. We're motioning the back out here and we're going empty. That means we've got five blockers right here, okay? How are we gonna block it first and foremost? Well, first and more, foremost, one, two, three, four, okay? We got four defensive linemen, so those guys are always going to be blocked. Now the next question, and I see this all over the league, uh, is who's the fifth guy? Where are we gonna slide our protection for the fifth guy? Are we gonna slide it strong, okay? So are we gonna slide to this defender right here, or are we gonna slide weak? and go to this defender right here, okay? I need to know that as a quarterback because whoever we don't slide to becomes my hot guy, meaning he's coming free and I gotta know that off of the throw. All right, a lot of times, uh, which way we slide, uh, at least this is when I talk to, to NFL people, which way they slide a lot of times depends on them telling the quarterback who their first read is. So if we want your first read to be down to the bottom, we're gonna slide back to the top and we're gonna leave the hot guy in front of you and vice versa. If your first read is gonna to be to the top, we're gonna to slide to the bottom and we're gonna leave your hot in front of you, okay? In theory, makes a lot of sense, okay? Why do I say in theory? I say in theory because to me, it is so much easier to cover one hot as opposed to two hots. So normally when you've got a two-man concept as we do down here on the bottom, unless both guys are running quick routes, okay, unless they're both running quick routes, you really are only gonna have one hot, okay? So a lot of times you're using this guy to go down the field and then you've got your back doing something quick and so he becomes your hot. So you only have one hot. And so just like here, if they wanna bring this pressure, they still have this guy to be able to cover the hot. So we don't get an advantage. What we want to normally have happen if they make us go hot is we wanna have two guys attacking one guy that's filling in for that. And so here, Miami is going to slide to the top. Miami is gonna to slide to the top and this guy is going to come free and you're gonna notice, and we'll just run this, you're gonna notice there's no quick throw, okay? Even if the back is supposed to be the quick throw, right? These are the things we have to consider. I'm motioning my back five yards deep in the backfield. So we're not motioning him up to the line of scrimmage, we're motioning him five yards deep 
in the backfield. So if I'm hot, what is he going to do to make sure he's available right now? If we normally are telling him, hey, you're gonna motion out here and then you've gotta push three, four yards deep before you break on your choice. So that's eight yards he's got to go before he breaks uh, to allow me to have an opportunity to throw it. So that's one of the tough things if you're gonna put him, motion him into the backfield. Or you just say, hey, if you have to see the pressure from there and once you see it, I need you to go right now or make yourself available or turn around or you know, maybe it's not even run. Once you see it hot, just make yourself available right there and I can throw it to you. But you gotta do something. You can't run the same eight yards after the snap and think that we're gonna have time to throw a hot. Tua killed right here. He's got no option right here to be able to throw it to that side because nothing happens fast enough, okay? So here to me, protection 101 when it comes to protecting empty. I always tell when I was playing, protect the backside, okay? Protect the backside. Take care of the four down and the backside guy, okay? I want those five taken care of, why? Because normally, as I was saying, on the backside, you can only have one guy that's hot. Normally, I can build two guys in hot to the front side. So normally, we have what we call a vertical hot and a horizontal hot, okay? So let's just come up with some options here. So this guy's going to the flat, and this guy's running a stick, okay? So I've got my horizontal hot, and I've got my vertical hot, okay? Let's say we're running a shallow, okay? So now I have my horizontal hot and my vertical hot, okay? Horizontal, we technically is a man or runaway hot. Vertical is more for a zone dog as they're dropping down to replace, but both guys can be hot for us. But I have way more options when I have two receivers that I can use. I'm probably not gonna use all three of them, but two receivers that I can use to be hot. So it's much harder for a defense to be able to match up to all of those uh, options or those two options to the front side. So I like my hot front side. So even if I'm telling you, I want you to read down here first, I want you to read the back choice first. That's your primary option. No problem. But that doesn't mean the protection has to go away from him. You can still protect this here because that's the, the easier way for the defense to attack us is to bring pressure weak side because it's harder for them to cover all three to the strong side, okay? So it's easier for them to bring pressure backside. So let's protect the backside because it's more prevalent and I have better answers to the top. Reed is still back here. As long as you're not hot to, a, to the front side, go ahead and read it backside. We want you to be there first. But that's where we get into problems is trying to simplify it. Hey, we're gonna take the quarterback's eyes you know, away from the, the protection, but to me, it still creates too many problems. So if we slid to the backside here, Okay, and take those five. Now my hot becomes here. So let's watch this as we play it out to the front side. Okay, there's my hot. We replace that guy right there. We've already got one quick hot built in right there. We've got another guy that's gonna end up going outside. Like to see him go a little bit faster if he feels that pressure come, but you got two fairly decent options to the front side. Might have to anticipate the one here because it takes a little bit too, too long, but We've got two options to the front side that are hard to cover or harder to cover for the, uh, for the defense. So if we were sliding it the other direction, which I would just do as a natural rule, we're still hot, we're still hot. They're bringing six, we only got five. So we are still hot here, but cover two of them, right? Give me the chance uh, to have two different guys I can throw it hot to and it's gonna give me a better chance to be successful and not take the sacks. And then the next piece, quarterbacks, you're all watching out there learn to throw the ball away. There is an art to throwing the ball away, throw the ball away, okay? If you know you don't have it and you know that there's no hot happening fast enough, throw it at his feet. Protect the eight yards, protect the 10 yards, protect the bad play trying to create in a certain situation. Throw the ball away and live for another down right here instead of taking an easy sack for the Chiefs. Okay, so here's another similar type thing. We're going to the four strong again, right? One, two, three, four, okay? I actually kind of like this concept now. I don't exactly know what they're doing backside because Waddle does one thing and the throw goes somewhere else. But to me, I was thinking that they were trying to run what we call a seven pump, 
Okay, so try to give them that out move and then pump it and go get a double move. And I say that because this is where Tua throws the football. And it makes more sense than just running a solo corner route over here, um, you know, when you're going four strong and having to wait for a corner route. So it makes more sense. I don't know if that's exactly the case. I'm just basing it off of what Tua is doing. Okay, and then what they do from there is they run a guy right over the, the middle of the ball. Uh, which, which I love, and then they run Tyreek on kind of a, a skinny post um, back here. So I really love this, and then they, they have the sled concept, which is the swing lead out here to come off of it. But I really like this. So if I get a too high look, right, I'm going to come back if I'm Tua, and I'm going to eye the backside safety, okay? So I'm going to run a double move, and I'm going to eye the backside safety. If I get the backside safety to jump, or if I at least get him to hold to the backside. If I get him to jump, obviously I'm gonna stay back here and run the double move. But if I get him to work that direction and take away that double move, then I am right back here to this high-low off of the Mike linebacker right here. And I am trying to take Tyreek unless this guy goes flying out of there, then I'm gonna recover underneath and then I'll recover to the swing. So if that's the premise, this and this, with that hook over the ball, really like the concept. So you see it. I'm eyeing the backside safety. Now again, you see Waddle's going here to the corner. Uh, so maybe that's what it is. And, and even if that's what it is as a corner, I know I'm probably not throwing it with the guy underneath him. So I would do the same thing and I'll peek this backside safety. And if I get him to move that direction at all, get your high low right here. High low is going to give me Tyreek Hill on the throw right there and I'm gonna get a shot reading off of the backside safety. Instead, here we're just, and again, this is why I, I'm not sure. I'm really not sure uh, what they were doing based on the throw. I was thinking it was a double move, but again, just wanna kinda of teach that if, if that's the case, I like the concept of the seven pump, and then this concept front side to attack all these different layers, and then uh, Tyreek to be able to take the middle. So if I had a middle closed defense and one free safety right here, I do the same thing. I come back and read the free safety. He stays in the middle. I go get my one-on-one. -on -one. If I work him back to that side, then I'm ready to drive the post in underneath him based on those underneath routes that we have. Okay, love this concept right here. It's a concept that we ran a million times. And so again, part of what I'm doing here is I'm, I am focusing a lot of times on some of the things that didn't work, but I, I never want to pretend like, oh my gosh, I show a video and, and you can only pull so many plays and like, oh my gosh, their offense is terrible. They never do anything good. That's not the case. All these offenses have good things about them. But when you can find 10, 12, 15 plays that you say, okay, I, I, I think we should adjust this or we should rethink this, that's when I think it's important to break this stuff down. But I want to show some of the good stuff that they're doing and, 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 and that two are doing as well. And so they're running play that we used to call F post. Love this play. So it's a shallow. We're going to run a corner back here and then we're going to check swing. Okay, so the idea is we're going to try to influence whoever the defender is in this area with the shallow. If I get him to pull on the shallow, then I'm trying to hit this F post. That's the primary part of it. If I don't get that linebacker to pull, then I work this triangle backside here uh, to whatever's going backside. Now, the kind of a throwaway route is we never really read this to the front side very often, um, you know, unless it just kind of popped open for us. But here, because they go to a too high shell, Tua does a great job of feeling this outside defender. So instead of reading basically inside on this play, he actually peeks at this outside and sees the corner stay down and does a great job of getting up over the top to the corner out. So you see it right there as he comes off, that guy squats on that. Great read by Tua. This guy stays down. Boom. That's the throw that we want to make right there. And he does that and completes it. So as we go back to teaching, so remember I said, Reed would be on this defender right here. This defender does not get influenced by the shallow. He's gone. Okay, so now as a quarterback, if I don't have uh, that to the front side, now I'm going to come back. And again, like to have that guy on a swing, but I'm going to read backside. 
Okay, so that's going front side. Now we come to the back side, reading this defender right here. He's turning and running here, boom. Kick your swing out here high-low, or even replace that guy with the shallow, depending on what comes first. But just kind of taking you guys through the entirety of the read. Nice job here by Tua to seed it out the front side. But that's how it would work if you don't have it front side. But I love the play. Love the play design and concept. Uh, lots of different ways to run it, but really, really good play concept. Okay? There's another one that I love, right? What's the one question I'm always going to ask? Who's your primary receiver? Who's your primary receiver? So answer to that is this right here. This is the favorite spot for the Dolphins. I talk about it all the time in between the hash and the numbers. That's my guy. Okay, I'm trying to get the ball to that guy. So when I say that, who's my primary? And I, I've broken down some other plays where they have a primary, but they don't have secondary routes that help the primary. Okay, that's to me what a good concept is. Know what I want to throw. So now, once I know that, the other plays, the other uh, um, routes need to come off of that and help get it open. So I love this right here. So what they're going to do is they're going to widen this guy and run him on a hook. Then they're going to take the other guy and they're going to run him inside and run him on a hook. Okay. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the linebackers that are covering these two areas, we're trying to get them to split. Okay, so we want the inside linebacker to step inside with my inside hook. We want the outside linebacker to chase outside to my outside hook so I can open up this window right here. Love it. That's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. I am forcing the details here. If the outside backer gets depth to take away my post, I throw the outside hook. If the inside backer gets depth to take away my outside post, I'm throwing the inside hook. So I've got answers and I got things that my quarterback can see right off the bat. So I'm gonna see this guy, this guy holds inside, my eyes are gonna automatically go to this defender. If that's the case, that defender stays down, boom, ball is out of my hands right now. This is what Tua does well, this is what they do well, but I like the quality concept. It's not just the skinny post all by itself, it's using the underneath guys to open up that skinny post and I wouldn't even mind if this guy got a touch wider on this. But regardless, I like what they're doing here. I like the way they're using the different guys to attack and do what they do best. Okay, so these are things too, just trying to figure out exactly what this concept is. Okay, so... They work this guy down inside. This guy looks like he's running a slant, so maybe double slants here. Uh, I'm, I'm only guessing because of where the inside route is. Okay, so this route goes inside. Okay, so that makes me think that we're trying to clear it out for this guy to come on a slant. And then our back comes out here, and he's kind of the flare control for us right here. Okay, so... That's the concept that we have to the top side, okay? So just like I was talking about before, if that's the concept, so it's here or you know, inside slant, whatever it is, slant outside, and then this going out here, okay? Very similar to what we were talking about with, um, with the, the, the running back screen that they threw earlier. I'm gonna start him in short motion. So if I start him in short motion and this guy starts to chase, I want to snap the ball as quick as I possibly can. Okay, why do I want to snap it quick? Okay, I want to snap it quick because I know that I've got bodies coming inside. So if I snap it quick and that defender that's chasing the back has to work through both defensive backs that are covering man and the two receivers that are coming inside. So I'm trying to create, again, a natural rub or a bubble or this guy to get caught up in the mix or have to go over the top or whatever to give space for me to just kick it to my back. So that's the first thing I'm looking at. As soon as I'm sending a guy in motion, does somebody match to him in a man-to-man -man capacity? Okay, in a man-to-man -man capacity here. And he does, and you'll see it right here. He does, as that happens, snap the ball. Snap the ball and throw it to him. Snap it and throw it to him. Okay, so I'd want to snap it and throw it to him and force him to have to get through all of this. Now, again, why does Miami stop him here? Why do we stop him? If my receiver is coming here and this is where I'm looking to throw it, why do I stop the back there so 
his guy that's covering a man may stop there as well, may stop right in the hole that we're trying to throw it to. So again, maybe that's not this play. Maybe that's not what they're trying to do. But again, I'm not really sure what stopping him here does for you. How does that help you on this particular play? And again, I be devil's advocate for myself. Okay, maybe we're running a shallow. Maybe this guy's running an in and we're using this guy as my, uh, my hook route. So if I get zone and I've got one linebacker here, maybe I can high low that guy in that area of the field. Okay, so I'm just, I'm trying to come up with something um, where that works. But just by looking at what they're doing here, everything staying front side, it sure doesn't look like that's the route, but, but maybe it is, okay? Maybe that's what they're trying to do and, and I can live with that if that's the case. You know, the other thing that if we got zone here, so if we got zone and I motion this guy, I said against man, I wanna snap it really quick. If I get zone and let's just say I've got that same thing happening in zone, I get zone, I'm gonna let him go a little bit wider before I snap it. Okay, Kurt, why are you gonna let him get wider in zone and snap it quicker in man? Okay, I told you why in man, because I'm trying to create that rub. In zone, I'm letting him get wider, why? Because this guy right here is responsible for him uh, to the flat. So if he's gonna run to the flat, and I know I wanna try to throw it to that area, I want that motion to go wider and try to get this guy to widen with him to do what? to open up the zone that I'm trying to hit back behind him. If that defender, and I motion him wide, and that defender doesn't do anything but stays there, now kick it to your swing right now because we've got leverage. So there's little nuances that change based on man, zone, movement by the defense, what they're trying to do, and what we're trying to attack on that particular play. So again, I... Uh, you know, I don't know 100% what this concept is, why we're doing it or why we're stopping the back. Because again, once you stop him and throw it to him, if it's man to man, it makes it hard on the offense, gives the advantage to the defense. Anytime we stop on a route, gives the advantage to the defense because they know where to attack us. If we even just snap this and threw it to him on the move, right there, just threw it to him on the move. Now, this defender has to decide where he's going. He's going sideways while we're going downhill, gives us an advantage. Okay, so here we get a blitz zero look, okay? But the beautiful thing for Miami is it's a blitz zero look, but the extra rusher is way back here. So he should be coming and forcing Tua to have to throw it sooner than he wants to. But, <coughs> excuse me, but he gets caught uh, way back there with depth. So it gives Tua time to be able to drop back and see what's going on here. Now, I don't mind peeking at this because anytime we get blitz zero, meaning there's no safeties back in the middle of the field, we love to attack the middle of the field. Throw it up and let our guy go get it. So I like the idea that he's thinking Tyreek has the go route right here. Okay, we've got another inside go here and then we've got a shallow coming here. Okay, so I love that. Hey, let's think Tyreek. If I can get one-on-one -on -one with Tyreek, let's take it. Okay, but Tyreek's running a go route. Okay, why is him running a go route important. Well, it's important he's running a go route because he's going back outside the defender. So if that's the case, and I know that I'm good to go, I'm gonna come out and peak uh, 38 right here, okay? So because I've got this go going down the sideline, 38 really should turn his back to Tyreek and cover the go down the sideline. So I'm simply gonna verify that. I'm simply gonna verify that I got everybody else going to cover their guy, and I truly have a one-on-one -on -one with Tyreek and his guy so I can throw it away from the defender wherever it's at. If 38 does exactly this and turns and stays inside, I'm gonna look to throw this either back shoulder or throw the outside go um, instead of throwing it to Tyreek. And then if all else fails and I don't like it, I know I've got a shallow coming right in my face that I can take. But instead, Tua, I think, just decides ahead of time I'm gonna throw it to Tyreek. And, and again, I understand why. But you see here, Sneed's the one that ends up breaking up this play. So you wanna come back because it's, there's not a case of having to hold anybody, right? There's no safety I have to hold if I'm Tua. So once I know that it's blitz zero and there's no safety back there, get your eyes out here to see what's going on. 
see how they're covering it out here so you can make the best decision possible. Best decision might have been a back shoulder throw to the outside guy, or even so, maybe you don't even like that because he's playing in between. You don't like the back shoulder here, but you see that he's playing in a position to be able to help. Just recover right down underneath to Waddle and let him catch the short one and go the distance that way. But we throw it up. Again, I understand why, but we want to see the big picture and understand who the biggest problem is. I don't need to see this guy if I'm the quarterback. I don't need to see him because I expect Tyreek to beat him. I need to see if there's anybody else that could be a problem for me. This is the only guy that could be a problem, so that's who I'm going to peek right off the bat to let me know where I'm going to throw it. And again, like showing good concepts, like what they're doing here, and also showing how the Chiefs played really good defense. So they're running T-seam right here. So they're going to fake this quick little bubble to Tyreek because they throw this all the time. Then we're going to run a guy here, run a guy here, and we're going to get our tail back and try to get him down the seam right here. And we're trying to isolate these guys, get all these underneath guys to pull the Tyreek and hit this seam right here. So love the play design, love the play call. Okay, you see where we're trying to get it. You see where the window is here. If we have a, a good zone or we're able to beat them, but they're playing two man and they play this beautifully. This guy's coming up to tackle Tyreek. Everybody else is man to man. The backer that's coming up does a good job of rerouting and kind of banging the back. So there's no throw across the board. We're stuck having to give it to Tyreek late and that guy is already breaking on him. Love the play design, good play design. It just, in this case, it was wired by the Chiefs as a number of concepts were uh, throughout the night. The Chiefs played an excellent game as they did right there. Okay, so here's another one of these plays where we basically have everything going out the front side. Okay, so all three receivers, everybody else is kind of blocking back here. And I guess we have a late outlet over here, but we've got three receivers working to the front side. So we've got Tyreek running down the middle of the field. We've got an under route on the outside, and then we run a corner route here with Waddle. Okay, so again, these are things that go through my mind. Why, 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 okay? And the thing is, is this down the middle, I completely get it. You get middle open, which you're getting a lot of that too high safeties. Let's run the fastest guy down the middle. He made a living in Kansas City running down the middle. Let's run him down there and see if we can get a shot down the middle. Okay, if we can't get a shot, it's going to be because this Mike linebacker takes off running and chases him down the middle of the field. Great. Okay, we've got this under coming here. So now what I want to do is I know if I get the Mike linebacker out of there chasing down the middle, that that's going to leave me only one underneath defender on the inside to that side. Okay, so there's only one guy left. If Tyreek's not open because this guy chases him, there's only one guy left out here. So now I want to attack that one guy. That's the guy I want to put in conflict. So I'm putting it under right here. Okay, since I'm putting it under right there, the question I always ask is, okay, why do we put a corner here? Okay, because what you notice is both of those guys are going to different zones now. So Waddle, the corner route, is going to the deep zone on the outside, and the under route is coming to the hook zone on that same side. So if we're just watching this, and we're going, okay, we're going to run down the middle, and this guy goes and chases it. And then we're going to run to the corner, and there's a guy sitting out there that's all by himself that can cover it. And then we're going to run inside to a zone where there's another guy that is in position to cover it. Doesn't mean they cover it, doesn't mean they don't screw it up, but... I'm taking all these guys to different zones and we're giving them an opportunity to cover different zones, which is what zone coverage is. Everybody's got a different zone. We're giving them the opportunity to cover it, okay? Kind of like this, okay? As it plays out, boom, this guy's coming here. Boom, this guy's coming there. Boom, this guy's going there. And we're running right into them on this particular play. Kurt, what would you do different? How would you change it? Okay, here's what I would do. I would change it by going down the middle with Tyree. Clear that out. Go. All right? Now isolate this guy. Waddle, push up, run an in route. Push up, 
and run an under route. So now I've got two guys coming inside off of one defender. Okay, so let's run this a little bit and let's take a look. Okay, we do this, boom. Right here, Waddle's wrapping into this zone and I've got this here. Okay, so now you've got a decision to make as this guy. Do you wanna chase inside? Do you wanna hold inside and give me the outside one? Do you want to drive up here on the underneath one and give me the one back behind you? And we've got a two-on-one isolation off that front side hook defender and we're in better shape than setting up and putting them in position to do this, okay? For all those coaches out there. We ran this a lot, okay? This is what we called under. We made an adjustment on this that if the defender inside the number two receiver, so the guy that in our, was running the in route, if that defender carried him to his depth, that 12 yard depth of his, if he had that guy carry him, it doesn't matter if it's zone or man, you don't have to read whether it's zone or man, just if that guy carries you to 12 yards, so you can't really break in at that point, then go ahead and break out. Okay, so that was our adjustment. You're breaking in, you're breaking in, you're breaking in, you're breaking in. Oh, if there's a guy there that's chasing you, playing man, or a zone defender that carries you to 12 yards, go ahead and break out. If you break out against zone, doesn't matter. I should be throwing the underneath guy anyways because that guy carries you to 12 yards. If it happens to be man, then we get exactly what Miami's doing here and we get the best of both worlds. We get a runaway and a runaway. We get double runaways and especially one against leverage because we've got a guy inside of us carrying to the 12 yard mark. So it's a way to run this play over and over and over again to have the answers that you want against zone coverage but also the adjustment can be made to help you against man coverage. Ironically enough, it's exactly the same play that I ran for Arizona on Larry Fitzgerald's 64 yard touchdown in the Super Bowl against the Steelers. It was two man. We had Anquan Bolden break out here on man. Boom, he took Troy Palomalu with him as well. Larry won on the under, he caught it. He split down the middle because everybody else was chasing man and we got a 64 yard touchdown based on that man adjustment on this exact play. Okay. So we already showed this one time, right? They did this one time and they tried the T seam down off of it, but this is a common play and I love this. Love this change up from the Tyreek quick screen. Now we're gonna run the fake bubble and go. Okay, so we get everybody to jump up on Tyreek. We've been throwing it. Good play design, it's in everybody's playbook, can do it a lot of different ways. Great job right here, okay? Great job right here, we get what we want. Once we get the corner to jump, the read is off of the safety, he stays high. There's your whole shot right there. Just gotta make it, okay? So these are the throws you gotta make to a, I'd like to see his footwork was off a little bit. I'm not sure why they were making the play fake and doing all of that stuff, again. No reason to make a play fake. Just come up and we want these guys thinking that it's a screen. We don't want them to think it's a run. We want them to think it's a screen and get that out there and get this guy coming up. But regardless, just think it threw him off a little bit footwork wise, uh, but just we got to make that throw. It's a big time opportunity there. Okay, so I like this. They do a lot of this wide motion stuff, motion stuff out of here. Boom, we're gonna come here. Here, we normally like to go and hit this in between the hash and the numbers, and this guy running a shoot, and we're doing a lot of different things off of it. We can bring back the naked bootleg, all that stuff. So I like the change up here, that we're gonna come and motion as if we're going to do that, and then we're gonna break back on the corner. We're gonna run the hitch here, so it kind of becomes the old smash concept. And then from the back side, it looks like we are bringing everybody to the party that side. So I can kind of just read this, read the outside defender. He stays down, take your shot up over the top. He gets depth, boom, and then recover here to the shallow and then work your way across. It's really well done right here. Read the corner. I like this by Tua. Read the corner. Body language of the corner says, I'm covering the deep one. My numbers are turned towards you. I'm working my way back. Good timing. Good read here, hit your back foot, get the ball out of your hands. It's just the one thing that's a little bit harder about these is when you're motioning and then he's gotta get 
all this distance on the motion, right? You have to throw this ball before he gets into position and it allows the defense a little opportunity to react to it on a long throw. But again, like the concept and you see, if this guy gets deep and this guy pushes hard to that, then we're gonna recover right here to the shallow. Good solid concept off of some of the things that they already do. All right, this one is another one that I broke down before. And so, once again, I was gonna ask the question, ever put in a play, ever get a play as a quarterback, ever watch a play on TV? Um, when you get all the, the whole picture, you're always gonna ask yourself, what's the primary? Who are we trying to throw the ball to? Because that's the most important thing. We design plays to try to get the ball to somebody specific. And then we have complementary concepts or routes to that. So if that's not open, then something else should be open because it's complementing what we're doing. So if we're trying to hit this area again between the hash and the numbers, okay? What I know is that when we've got a three by one set, there are probably going to be two defenders that go to that side. The Mike linebacker and the Sam linebacker are gonna work to that side. So I've got to do something if I'm gonna try to hit that window. Uh, I've got to do something to try to beat one of these guys. Now, you might say, and again, this is trying to give you a big picture on how this works. We might say, well, this Mike linebacker, we expect him to be in between the hashes. So uh, we're not going to worry about him and we're going to beat him with the throw. So I'm going to widen this guy and then bring him back into this area so I can hit him in a wider spot so the Mike linebacker doesn't get involved. Okay. That's okay, that's a why. That's why we're running the route the way that we are, and so how do we complement that? So how I would complement that then is I would take this receiver and I would widen him as well. And I would widen him out to the numbers. Okay, Kurt, why would you do that? Well, I would do that because A, I've gotta get him out of the way of this throw to the skinny post. I gotta get him out there, so I gotta clear him out, so I'm gonna widen him uh, so he's away from that throw. So I don't have to throw it over the top of him. The other thing I'm gonna do is when I widen him, I'm gonna try to widen this linebacker. So by widening that linebacker, I'm creating a bigger window so I can beat the inside linebacker or the Mike linebacker with the throw, okay? So again, this is how play should be designed. What are we trying to do? Where are we trying to throw this? Who do we have to beat with the throw? So everything, so everything should be complementary to that, okay? So they don't do that here though. So they run this and run to the window. Great, okay, no problem. So now I'm gonna ask myself, okay, how do I take care of these two guys? If that's what I'm trying to throw it to, how do I take care of those two guys so I can throw that throw? Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is let's say, okay, we've got a too high shell, which we've been getting. I'm worried about the Mike linebacker getting in the way. How am I gonna take care of the Mike linebacker? Well, I expect him to between, be between the hashes. So I'm gonna run a guy in between the hashes. I'm gonna run a guy right there. So if my biggest worry is the Mike linebacker, I'm gonna tell Tua on this play, see the Mike linebacker first. If the Mike linebacker is 10 yards deep like he is here. I want you to drop back and throw it to the guy that's at five yards on the hook route right underneath him. Throw it to him. It, right? If, if that guy doesn't cover it, I'm going to read the Mike linebacker. If he can't cover the hook, throw the hook. If he's down low or comes down and jumps this hook, boom. Now we've got what we want and we're trying to throw the post over the top of it. So that's what the first thing that I'm going to do. Okay. So Mike linebacker is the first guy I'm worried about. He doesn't give me the post, take the hook. He takes the hook. Now I'm ready for the post, but I've got another linebacker that I'm worried about. So what if what if we run this and this guy jumps that and we're trying to throw the post and this guy goes back and takes the post, okay? Because those are my two issues. Those are the two things that I could have problems with. So now what if that happens? So for me, the next thing is, okay, so if they want to do that, Mike jumps the hook, Sam wants to drop back on the post, I need to replace the Sam linebacker now. So for me, if I'm running this play and trying to get this throw, Okay, so I know certain coverages and when I want that throw and how I'm going to make that throw is I believe in every situation I'm going to have two linebackers there that I'm going to have to deal with. So I want to make sure that I get three guys on those two. So one, I'm going to do this to use up the inside linebacker. The other one, I'm probably going to put on a hook 
right on the inside edge of the numbers to use up the other linebacker, okay? I don't want to keep him out there when I allow this corner to cover him and then these two, so we're going three guys to three different zones and now they can cover us. So what I want to do is I want to bring this guy into that next zone. Maybe I want to push him up and then bring him on an under route. So if this guy wants to get depth, boom, I replace with the under route. Okay, so whatever I'm doing, I am bringing three guys to the party against those two defenders, and that's how I'm going to beat it. Here, what you see is they don't do that. They bring one guy into this hook area, okay? But what happens is he's running to the Sam linebacker. So Sam linebacker can squeeze down and cover him. By doing that, and because we have three receivers to that side, that's the other thing we have to understand. We have three receivers to that side, so we have to assume that this Mike linebacker is going to push that direction because we're heavy over to this side, so we expect him. So we can't just assume he's gonna to go to the other side. So we do this, and we run the hook to the hook area, so we try to use up the hook defender. That's great, but we've done nothing to use up the Mike defender, so he's there to be able to take away the skinny, and the problem with putting uh, the one guy in the hook area is now we can't bring this guy in here because now we have two into one area, so we leave this guy outside, and now we've got cover, 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 and we've done nothing to help open up what our primary route is on this particular play. So a way other people will do this is they'll push this guy up and then run him on an under, okay? Then they'll run the post over the top, then they'll push this guy up and run him on an under. So they don't have to be stationary routes. We're gonna run him on the under, same thing. Mike linebacker gets depth, boom, hit it right now. Mike linebacker comes down, then I'm reading my high-low, ready to hit the skinny post, reading my high-low off the other guy for the post to the outside under. And so you're always trying to understand what we're trying to get, who our biggest problems on the play are, and how do we take them out of it so we gain an advantage one way or another. All right, so again, this is one of those that you just sometimes have to tip your hat to the defense, okay? So here, we're gonna run this double slant with the back in the flat again, okay? So good concept uh, that you like against just about anything. And Kansas City's gonna bring pressure right here, okay? So they bring pressure and we're hot. We gotta throw it to one of these guys, but they do a great job of bringing what we call a two zone dog. So normally they bring pressure and we're feeling good about maybe the slant, but a lot of times we're taking this flat right here in hopes they got man-to-man -man coverage and somebody's chasing the flat. But as you see right here, they do a great job. I'm hot, okay? Two is hot right here, okay? So now where are you going to throw the football? And I think he's right here if this is a double slant, but you'll notice this guy ends up stopping right here, okay? So this guy ends up stopping right here. So that's why I believe this one is a flat, a hook, and then an in route, not a double slant over there, okay? So it makes it even harder. But they do a great job of running back and can't take the flat, which you normally take as a hot because they're dropping the corner down here. They're matching this guy over, which makes the hot uh, tough right here. But you gotta have what we call a vertical hot. So this guy does go vertical and hook right here, that's where Tua really needs to hit with this throw. But again, it's tough. He might be thinking it's man out here and I'm going to throw it to the back. All of a sudden, this guy comes down. Now I'm in trouble. So you got to be able to decipher, if, is it man or zone coverage? And where am I going to throw it? Okay. And again, it lends itself one more thing to the details. Okay. So let's just say this guy is running the in or maybe even the skinny post that we've been talking about because that's their favorite route. We've got a flat here. My question would be, why is this guy coming inside? Why is he angling inside before he stops? Again, I'm just asking why. If I'm trying to hit this again, and this is my window, just like on the last play, I want to open up the window. I'm not gonna open up the window by going further inside to cloud that window. I'm gonna open up that window by widening right here and hopefully pulling this linebacker wherever he is out to open up that window there. Or uh, 
even if I don't pull him, if that linebacker wants to stay here, instead of running right into him and letting him cover me, I'm widening. So even if he wants to drop away from me and take the post, I'm opening myself up over there. And then the third thing, which to me always becomes important, is I'm always trying to build in options for my quarterback as a hot plan. You guys heard me talk about the pressure plan all the time. By widening right here and hooking, what it does is it helps me against a zone dog. So I've got my horizontal hot, I've got my vertical hot, but when they bring pressure here, they're bringing a guy from the backside to pop out and try to replace that pressure. If I'm widening and getting to that hole, I'm keeping myself away from that linebacker as we play it here. See, this linebacker is waiting here. If I push wide and go right here, it sets me up right in that hole against the zone dog to make myself available for the hot. Little details become so big on even some of the simplest plays. So you see here, right? Lots of little things within the offense. Some good things that they do, and I even like some of the concepts they have. I just think they could be cleaned up and made easier on their quarterback by giving him a little bit better options to be able to decipher exactly who's taking something away. And if that guy's taking it away, I have somebody to replace him. Always giving your quarterbacks options on each and every play.